Hell, oh, good afternoon, year tens. How's it all going? Let's see how many of you guys are there. I know I'm, I'm running 60 seconds late. Sorry, folks. I am online. Do, do, do. Let's see how many people. Oh, look at that. Wow, that was quick. Hey, we're in. Good job. Hi, Laura. Hi, Sophia. Thanks for coming. Hi, Libby. Hi, Money. Hola, hola. <clears throat> Sub Zach, love that. That's awesome. Sup, sup. I've got to do the register. Let's do the reg. Let's do the reg. How's it going, Caitlin? How's it going, Hoppy? Mm -mm. Got a money. Got Zach. Got Sophia. Got Sophia. Got Lara. Got Caitlin. How did it? Got Libby. Smash and I got Hao Ping. Yes. Doing well. That's a good start, isn't it? It's a good start. Still missing loads. Tiffany, Kayla, Mel, Audra, Atia, Ananya, Dom, Ryan, Lynn. Ah, oh, there's Mel. Sup, Mel. Sup. How's it going, guys? Hey, there's Dom. Uh, just to embarrass Dom a little bit. So Dom just randomly turned up to my other year 10 lesson. It was hilarious. He just rocked up and was like, hey, everybody, and then was like, oh, no, I'm in the wrong classroom. It was amazing. Dom, it, honours to God, proper made me chuckle. Loved it. Ha! <laughs> Absolutely loved it. It was brill. Oh, hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Lynn's in the house. Still missing. Tiffany, Kayla, Order, Atia, Anania, and Ryan. It, oh, there's Liz. I, I'm so, Lara, I'm so glad that you found it as entertaining as I did. It was b actually hilarious. It, it just proper made me chuckle. Re it really did. <laughs> oh, so funny. Oh. So, guys, today we are continuing with acid base theory. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be rocking on there. Rocking out with acid base theory. Going to be looking at Bronston Lowry, acids and bases. We'll do some recapping. We'll have another go at doing some uh, dissociation equations or ionization equations, if you guys wish. Hey, there's Kayla. Kayla's in the house. And there's Ananya. We're wicked winner. Winner. Ananya's in the house. Okay, there's Kayla. Still missing. Uh, still missing Tiffany Audra. Atia and Ryan. Let's see how long it takes these guys to arrive. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so we'll do, do you know what? Since you know, since you guys have arrived, I'm tempted just to crack on. Just crack on, lads. Mel, Tiff is coming. She's obviously just running a little bit a little bit late. Ha. Uh Audra, anyone seen Audra? Atia and Ryan. Atia is usually like the first person here. Ryan, eh, kind of understand that. He, he tends to be a little bit late. Uh, her Wi-Fi is probably buffering. <laughs> Audra's watching, but she doesn't have a device. She can type on, she says. Cool. Okay. There's Tiffany. There's Audra in the house. There's Tiffany. Just missing Atia. She's here. Yay. Uh, just missing Atia and Ryan now, folks. I think at this point, I'm going to crack on. Going to crack on. Crack on. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's crack on. Yeah. Okay. So, just Ryan and Atia who are missing. Okay. I will close my bitch. Right. And then let's share my screen. Share my screen. Share. Honestly, losing my mind. Lockdown. Blame it entirely. Right, we're in. We are in. There we go. There we go. There we go. Get rid of my keyboard. You are in tablet mode. Would you like to keep tablet mode? Right, 10 a. Right, so last lesson, we did some awesome acid base stuff. We were looking at dissociation of acid bases, we were looking at equations. Yeah, so we did the dissociation, writing them, and then we described strong and weak. And 
Do you know, we can sum this lesson up in, a, in very few equations. We really can. Yeah, so dissociation of acid and bases. Everyone here now knows that when you put an acid and base into water, it will split in half. We recognize that. I, I am very aware that I haven't spent enough time on the bases front. Yeah, and I need to mention bases. I might do a little bit of bases today. Um, writing dissociation and then defining them weak and strong as partially ionized and fully ionized. Can I also just mention, there's the, the internet is an amazing resource. It's got, you know, there's there are great things on the internet, but there's also some real junk out there, some real garbage, garbage chemistry, you know? And one of the ones that I keep saying, Ryan, I couldn't find the stream, sorry I'm late. Oh, don't worry about it. Ryan, you are, are you here? Don't worry about it. Um, okay, so let's go for a new page. Oh, was that, was that lesson two? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I put this as lesson two on my webinar. Change that. So we've got, Oh, I don't like being in red. I prefer being in black. There you go. So acid base theory. Acid base theory. GCSE, of course. Acid base theory. And this is lesson three. We did an intro where we and oh, there's Atia. Yeah, there she is. So acid base theory lesson three. Learning objectives. Yeah, always good to have our learning objectives. So number one is I need you to know two people. Bronsted, this is where you, you're gonna say, what are their first names? And I'm gonna go, I have no idea. Um, um, I wanna say Henry Bronsted, but I don't think that's right. Don't know. Bronsted and Lowry, Lowry, Lowry. Lowry, there we go. GCSE, of course. Uh, yes, lesson three. Sorry, GCSE. Sorry, okay. So, Bronsted Lowry, and we need um, Bronsted Lowry theory. That'll do. Yep, Bronsted Lowry theory. Second one is I need you guys to understand the term, understand, I don't even bother with the term, just understand proton donors, proton donors. And proton acceptors, acceptors, acceptor. I think it's actually accept all. I don't know, proton acceptor. Next, the last one is be able to identify, identify an acid, acid, ah, identify acid stroke base from equations. That's what I need you guys to be able to do by the end of the day. So just before I do that, I do want to quickly mention bases. Uh, oh, Thomas Martin Lowry. No way. Johann Nikolaus Bronsted and Thomas Martin Lowry. Wow. I did not know. I didn't know the Johann one. Johann Nikolaus Bronsted. Yeah, uh, I definitely didn't know the Thomas Lowry. Wow. I obviously looked up Bronsted more than... Uh, more than more than Lowry. Ah, oh, yes, there are lots of good things on the internet, like how I found out how to calculate the base dissociation constant. <laughs> so true, so true. It, it, we don't tend to talk about base dissociation constants, actually, KBs. Um, yeah, we tend to talk about more like KAs. We never, we never actually do KBs at A-level. Uh, KBs are more, um, tend to use KB at first year degree, which is hilarious. Nicholas Cage. Okay, okay, Ryan, all right. Um, just to quickly mention, before I go any further, we know, yeah, and I've already done this with you guys, we know that there are two families that we're talking about, the acids and the bases, yeah, and we can say all of these guys are acids, yeah, and then you've got the bases over here. I am just do want to just, and I'm sure I've already done this with you guys, inside the bases is a separate family, yeah, which are alkalis. Yeah, so what we actually say is that all alkalis are bases, but not all bases are alkali. There's a guy on YouTube who eats him. That's so weird, Libby, so weird. So yeah, not all bases are alkalis, but all alkalis are bases. So you should always, you never really use the word alkali, you should just use the word base all the time. Yeah, they do ask you though at GCSE, 
So what's the distinction between them? You guys will know. Some of you will definitely remember this. I must have taught this to you guys already. Guys, what makes an alkali so, so special? What is different from an alkali from another base? Yeah? One word. One word. Anybody on the chat? And don't be looking it up either, Halping. I know with you in that super speedy typing Google stuff. Water soluble. Tiffany's on it. Amazing. Yeah, soluble in water. Love it. I love the water soluble. It's better than mine, really. Um, yeah, soluble in water. I like it. It'll dissolve. And the, the ones, of course, I always mentioned, uh, I, one word would be soluble. Yeah, that, that's the word that matters. It's why I put it first. That's the only one that I really care about. It's soluble. That, that's all it is. And you guys do need to recognize some of these. And, of course, the most important one, top answer, by a mile, is sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide. Yeah, I know, go on Yorkshire. Sodium hydroxide. Yeah, that most important alkali. Been using that since year seven. Yeah, but there are others. By the way, commonly known, sodium hydroxide chemical name can sometimes be called caustic. Caustic. Uh, caustic, caustic soda. That's what it's known as in industry. Kid you not. In industry, they don't like letting go of the old names. If you call it sodium hydroxide, they'll get annoyed at you. And they'll go, learn the proper name. I had to learn the proper name, so you got, you better learn the proper name too. Caustic soda. There you go. Uh, and the word caustic, of course, means corrosive. It's where the name kind of derives. Yeah, literally, the word caustic is corrosive. Um, hence why it's called caustic soda. Soda is the sodium. Yeah, and then caustic meaning it, it's it's very uh, corrosive. Um, so yeah, so sodium hydroxide is the number one. You you can of course swap in any group one metal. I always love that about chemistry. You got one, you got the others, baby. That's amazing. So we've got potassium hydroxide. Yeah, potassium. Uh, these all have common names as well. Uh, potassium hydroxide. I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to call it lye. I think it's lye. Yeah, like that. Common name for potassium hydroxide is lye. Uh, lithium hydroxide? I have no idea what the common name is for lithium hydroxide. No idea. Ne never use it enough. I do have it in my collection. Not as in my school collection. Not at all. Not anything. Yeah, but lithium hydroxide, all of them just as corrosive as each other. Yeah, I don't know what lithium hydroxide I'm going to look up lithium hydroxide. You'd think that the lithium would be called lye because it has the L in it, but it, it's definitely not. Um, and these are the ones you definitely should know. Mr. Duncan, how do you define a base? Uh, like, how do you know if it is a base? Oh, Mel, so glad you asked. You're going to laugh at this. How do you define a base? It reacts with an acid. <laughs> I kid you not. Totally true. Acid. Acid. A substance, a substance that reacts with a base. Oh, so funny. Totally true, though. Totally true. Yeah, and then a base. Guess, guess what the base one is? <laughs> I love chemistry. I, I really do. I, it just, it's because I'm lazy. Yeah, I, I genuinely think because... But then how did they know something was an acid? Because it reacts with a base. <laughs> oh, a base is substance that reacts. I know, right? Chicken before the egg or something. I don't know. Oh, that's funny. That reacts with an acid. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, it, it's totally true. I swear to cow, honestly. Oh, I'm right acidic. I don't know why. Something that reacts with an acid. Um, how did they establish a base or acid in the first place? Um... It's a good question, Libby. In reality, you can imagine these like, okay. I love how, oh, I can go right back if you like. History of acid bases, God, I haven't taught this in a while. Uh, so if pure fluorine reacts with an acid, it's a base. Yes, um, but fluorine reacts with everything. It's a bit, that's a bit, that, you're, you're choosing a really bad, bad example there. You're choose, that, you, you've literally picked up and pulled out the Tyrannosaurus Rex of the, two, of the, of the elements Fluorine will react with everything. It doesn't really count then, does it? This is strange, but kind of logical. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, alchemists. Um, I, I just want a picture of an alchemist. Um, images. 
So you can imagine these people, you know, alchemists were these, they, they were kind of classed as wizards, really. You know, and oh, I love that. That's a, that's a pretty picture, that. I wonder if that'll be a painting. Yeah, so does that mean it's a base? Uh, fluorine's more complicated than that, Mel. Fluorine reacts with everything. It's hard, hard to, you, you, you need to choose somebody else. You, 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 you just, potions, yeah. Well, what you can imagine is that these guys were just messing around in laboratories. You know, they'd mix this liquid with this one. They'd mix this solid. And when a solid dissolved into water, they'd be like, ooh, that's exciting. Yeah, oh, it's disappeared into the water. Now, I wonder what would happen if I mix that solution yeah, with something else. And, and do I see anything? And what they just realized, meth. Oh, blimey. Thanks, Ryan, for that. What a great contribution that was, Ryan. Breaking bad. Yeah, they're a bit further on than this. The, these guys were just, like, adding things. I mean, like... One of the main ingredients that that uh, alchemists used to deal with is urine. Urine is a fascinating substance. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. This is how I envisioned myself making tea when I'm 70. You, you, do you know what? If you did, Libby, that would be amazing. That's probably how I'm going to do it too. So I'm going to let you off with that one. I think that's an awesome idea. Yeah, that, that would be me at the age of 80 making myself cups of tea and coffee. I'm probably not going to make it to 80, but yeah, you know, 65. I'll make it that far. Anyway. So anyway, so they, they've just been mixing these guys together and what, what they see are patterns. And this is the thing. So L Libby's question earlier of, well, hang on a minute, you know, which how can you establish it in the first place? Well, they're looking for patterns. And when they see patterns, they investigate patterns. And they found that two particular families would react with, the, with each other all the time. And they started to group them. Yeah, this, it wasn't as complicated as you imagine it to be. In fact, this was the easier bit. It gets way harder later on. Can I just point out, when they started getting to the point where they were weighing atoms, now that's complicated. Like, and seriously, it make, make, gives me goosebumps just talking about it because the chemistry they were doing was incredible. Like, like phenomenal. It's just out of this world. It's just bonkers cool. Um, uh, just a point, okay. You guys are constantly asking me for the extra bits. You know, you're whining at me about how, you know, I don't say it's all the chemistry properly, so you're just a bunch of liars. Like, I'm just going to throw one more out there then, just so you know. Um, what happens if you have a substance that reacts with both? Yeah? So there is a third family. You do not need this for GCSE. I shouldn't teach you any of this stuff. It, it, you know, it's really bad. It's only because you guys ask, and you guys actually seem to enjoy chemistry. There is another family called amphoteric. Amphoteric. Uh, that's, yeah, amphoteric. Amphoteric. And if you're amphoteric, you are both an acid and a base. An example of this is aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide is amphoteric. I, I can't remember if it's theric. I think it's teric, amphoteric. Uh, you can check me on the spelling of that one. But aluminium oxide is actually both an acid it's both an acid and a base. It can be either. And the reason why is because it reacts with both acids and bases, which means it must have both characteristics. Yeah, so that's amphoteric. What a lovely word that is. Love that. You don't, by the way, that's an A2 spoiler. Yeah, A2 spoiler there, folks. Spoiler. <laughs> amphoteric. It's a lovely word. Um, okay, I do. I'm just continuing my we'll work on bases here. Because we've picked up all the hydroxides, which is great. Uh, but I do just want to mention a couple of, of bases that are not alkalis. Yeah, and there's one that's more important than anything else. And that's calcium carbonate. Got to mention limestone. Yeah, this is limestone. Otherwise known as calcium carbonate. No Roman numeral needed since it's not transition. Calcium carbonate. Yeah, and that's a base, not an alkali. We use this in making cement and concrete because it's not soluble. If it was, all of our houses would just wash away. It'd be a nightmare. So calcium carbonate, um, cool stuff. I'm trying to think of other, other examples of insoluble bases that you guys are gonna actually need. I don't think you need any others. I, I, I'm tempted to mention uh, calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is an awkward one because calcium hydroxide is partially soluble. <laughs> That's just going to boggle you guys even more. Partially soluble. Yeah, I know. And you guys are going to say, so is it a base or an alkali? 
it's right on the fence. Yeah, it's kind of like there. You, you, you kind of put it like there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's partially soluble. That means a little bit dissolves, but not a lot. Yeah. Nice just to mention that one as well. Uh, calcium hydroxide. Yeah. Otherwise, by the way, uh, lime water is the dissolved version. It's nice then to, I'm giving you a limestone cycle. Um, since we're there and we've dropped into bases of calcium carbonate, I feel like I've got to do limestone cycle now. It's going to give you the limestone cycle. Going to do it really quick. Yeah, not going to take too much time with this. Calcium carbonate is a white solid. White solid. That's a mess, that one. Cal calcium carbonate. White solid, and it is insoluble. If something does have hydrogens in it, it's either an acid or base. No, how ping, that, that's not... You, you, you're, you're being too general now. Remember, to be an acid or base, you've got to be able to give away the hydrogen or receive a hydrogen. Now, I'm coming to that for proton donors today. If you heat up calcium carbonate, you guys know this, you'll go through thermal decomposition. And if you heat up thermal decomposition, and you will form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide escapes. Yeah, you then add that to water add to H2O, and it will react with the water in a very, very, very exothermic reaction. It gets extremely hot. Great one. And you'll make solid calcium hydroxide. Calcium oxide is a solid, and this forms a solid as well. And this this, this one here is called, this is called quicklime, by the way. Q-U-I-C-K. Uh, quicklime is what this is called. Quicklime, or calcium oxide. And this is called slaked lime. I know, right? Don't know why, it just is. Slate climb, which is a solid, does not, star does not, huh? What? Huh? Oh. Uh, and then we add to more water, dissolve, add more H2O, and some of it, not a lot, but some will dissolve. Yeah, a tiny amount, its solubility is very small. And this is lime water. Yeah, this is lime water. And then what you do is you then add the carbon dioxide back, and you turn back into to calcium carbonate, which is why you form the white precipitate. Just to show you what that looks like. Yeah, so calcium hydroxide is soluble partially. So I form an aqueous solution, filter out all the leftover solid. So this is lime water because it's in aqueous. I now add carbon dioxide to it by blowing into it, and I form calcium carbonate and H2O. And that there is a white solid because it's insoluble. And it hence why it turns cloudy. Yeah, comes up regularly at IGCSE, just so you know. They'll say, explain why lime water turns cloudy. And you say, because it forms calcium carbonate, which is insoluble. Two marks. Yeah, I'll just write that down. Calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate formed. Carbonate. Insoluble. White precipitate. Yeah, those are the two marks. Yeah, cool. Anyway, it's nice to talk about. The limestone cycle is an amazing cycle. It's very fun to play around with as well in chemistry. It's a boss practical. You can show that there's limestone in paper. They add limestone to paper to make it white. And if you take the paper and then you, you burn it and then you heat it to decompose it, then you add it to water and then you filter it, you'll make lime water from paper. Boss reaction. Totally doable at home as well. Uh, is it? You need a Bunsen burner. Got to get it hot. It's the thermal decomposition step. That's a bit of a tricky one. Um, anyway, so nice to mention it. Okay, let's go back to my lesson today, shall we? I've only got, like, what, 30 minutes left to do my lesson. That's easy. Bronsted Lowry. So, Bronsted and Lowry, what did these What did these guys look like? Yeah, there's Bronsted. Here's Bronsted. Yeah. Uh, Johannes Nikolaus Bronsted. There you go. And then we also have... We also have Lowry. Yeah. There we go. This is Lowry, which was Thomas Lowry. Yeah. These guys are the kings and queens of acid base theory. Kings and queen. Oops. Kings and kings. <laughs> These guys are the king of acid base theory. I mean, not as good as Zach being king, but, you know, they were pretty good. Because these guys were the... Can I just point out, I'm actually not going back far enough. These guys are the ones that currently, well, currently dominate. They still use today. And these guys realized they had what is called the proton, a proton theory. So this was their proton theory. And what these guys realized was for an acid to be an acid, 
Yeah, you've got to be able to have H plus. So the, the first question is, what's a proton? Yeah, proton. Well, a proton, if we look at the element hydrogen, hydrogen has one proton and one electron, no neutrons. So a hydrogen atom looks like this. That's what a hydrogen atom looks like. Yeah. So there's a hydrogen atom. This is a hydrogen atom. And what we're now going to do is we're now going to remove, we're going to remove the electron. And what you get is a proton, otherwise known as H+. So they realized that the whole of acid base theory was dependent on protons, on H pluses. And they said, if you are, and this is where we say, let's do some definitions, definition. So a Bronsted, Bronsted, they don't actually need any gap either. Bronsted Lowry acid, a proton donor. So what does that mean? That means that HCl can give away its proton yeah, to somebody else. Yeah, it's donating it. Mind blown, lol. So, that, and what they're doing is they were describing the dissociation, but what Bronsted and Lowry did was they realized that it was all about that guy. Yeah, H plus is what makes an acid an acid. Yeah. So the great thing is once you've got one definition, you've got the other. So define a Bronsted Lowry base. Ah, it's the opposite. So if one's a proton donor, it is a proton acceptor. Ah. Acceptor. Is it acceptor or acceptor? Acceptor. Acceptor. Proton acceptor. I don't know. Anyway, so we've got a proton donor and a proton acceptor. Is it acceptor or acceptor? Somebody Google that for me and just check for me. I feel like it's acceptor. Yeah. Proton acceptor. Let's look at what that means. Let's look at an example. OH minus will collect H plus. There's my proton and it will become water. So this is now big, except or. Ah. I, do you know what? I do know that because donor, it's not donor, it's donor, and therefore proton except or. I'll remember that next time. So I should remember that. Yeah, anyway. So we got this guy is now, is now collecting it. Yeah, these two are combining together. Just to show you what that looks like in terms of electrons. We have got OH minus. Here's an OH minus ion. And it's negative. It's got the electron there. Yeah. Shouldn't have made a mess of that. There we go. There's the extra electron. There's OH minus. And it sees H plus with nothing there at all. It's got an empty shell. Yeah. It's just an empty shell of an ion. There's only a proton here. Just a proton at the center. Well, what you can see happening is that it's going to going to link together and we're going to form, of course, we're going to form water. This is called, and this is where we need to make a note of this. Yeah. So this equation here, OH minus plus H plus, and by the way, you can flip it over if you like. Oh, my Wi-Fi is failing. Oh. So this equation here is very important. You guys need to know this. Yeah. This is called the ionic, looks like ionic, ionic equation, ionic equation for neutralization. We know that neutral is seven. Yeah. It's neither acid or base. And that neutralization, Mr. Duncan. Just said the same thing five times on my screen. My Wi-Fi is failing as well. Oh, same. Ooh. Uh-oh. Is it me? I can close some things down. Oh, I will just check. Uh, over there. Is it okay? Ooh. 
Same, 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 same. Oh no. Uh, I'm just gonna turn that off. Oh, oh no. Let's close that. Close that. Close that. Close that. Close that. Just close everything. Try and make it go a bit better. There we go. It's okay now. Yeah, it's fine now. Okay, maybe it was just overloaded. It's possible. Let's get rid of that. On that. There we go. I think that's better. All right. So this is called the ionic equation for neutralization. Because we realize that the H plus, here's our acid. This is the proton. Yeah, here's our acid. And then we've also got, here is our base. Yeah, there's our base. So we can identify, and then, of course, we're going to form neutral water at the end of it. Yeah, neutral water shouldn't do it as blue. should be doing it as green. It's nice to kind of, at times, use the universal indicator scale to show what's going on. Yeah, so there's this is the ionic equation of neutralization. And it's nice to show you how things are changing in terms of the bonding. Yet yeah, the H plus has come from the acid, uh, and that's floating around in water, and then the OH minus picks it up, and it, they bind together, and they're no longer available. So what we now need to do is, now that we've just kind of identified, I just want to show you a couple more equations, uh, because... We can now, let's look at our learning objectives, because you suddenly realize that we, we've already done that first learning objective. Yeah, we can all hear, we can all definitely, yeah, Bronsted, Lowry, Acid, Base 3. I think everyone now understands that they were talking about protons, and one's an accept a donor, and one's a, an acceptor. Yeah, and they had the definitions that ticks off as well. Now we need to be able to identify acids and bases from the equation. So... Zoom, 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 zoom. I've zoomed right out. Let's go back in. Right. So let's look at some example equations, e.g. equations. By the way, this is now neutralization. By the way, you can call these neutralization reactions. There is another name which you tend to use more at A level, and they are acid-base reactions. Yeah, you just tend to... Th those in reality, even at A level, are interchangeable. Yeah, but they just, they tend to prefer an acid-base reaction rather than a neutralization. Um, okay, so let's look at, let's look at some easy equations. So if I do this, HCl plus iron, plus, oh, plus iron metal. Let's do that. Do I want to do that? No, let's make it easier. Um... plus sodium hydroxide. Now, everyone in this room, number one is, what am I going to make? So guys, on the classroom, please, on the chat, what are the two products I'm going to make, please? Go, what are the two products? So this is number one, Q1. Q2, let's go blank plus calcium oxide goes to calcium hmm, nitrate and water. What was the other blank? Yeah, what's this one here? So I want to know these two and then this one. Yeah, on the chat, please. We Lara, well done, outstanding, great job. It's great. Gonna, gonna, go, gonna go green. Salt and water, great job. Well done, Hao Ping. Well done, Lara. Well done, Sophia. Straight off the bat. It was great. Well done. Question number three. Q3. Let's go for... Um, hmm. Magnesium carbonate plus uh, H2SO4 goes to blank and blank. Ooh, a bit more challenging. Well done, Helping and Lara, again in there early on the nitric acid side. Well done. Going to do this one, of course, in red. Seems reasonable to me since it's the acid. Ooh, wow. I suddenly realized how far I've zoomed out. HNO3. There we go. So why can you not write NaCl aqueous? You can. Absolutely. Can do if you like. 
It will be aqueous, you're absolutely right. It will indeed be aqueous. You can. There we go. Totally okay. You can. It will be aqueous. There'll be water around. They, I mean, I, I don't understand why you think you can't. They're probably, they're all going to be in solutions eight anyway. I just haven't given you state symbols. Ah, Lara's been beaten. Would you still need, would you still need the water there then in the question? Where, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of those equations are correct so far. Sophia's been beaten. Lara's been beaten. Libby, I don't get it. Can you explain, Libby? Would you still need the water there? Of course you do. The atoms add up. Say, so, okay, so Sophia and Lara have both been beaten by the third one. And in acid base three, when we very when we started it, it, it comes back to rules and equations. Yeah, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna just gonna add some of these to it. So acid base, acid base rules. Okay, rule number one: metal plus acid. You know, you guys have heard this before. Metal plus acid. What am I gonna make? Like combining NaCl and water to form. Oh, ha! That's funny. Libby, no, shouldn't delete that. No, you, you still need to have the H2O there to balance the equation. You are going to make water, Libby. Yeah, you are going to make water. Um, but it, and, and yes, the salt will dissolve in it, but you're making new water. The other water was already there. The, the other water was just, was with these are aqueous, which means they're dissolved in H2O. Yeah, there's already water there. Uh, you've made more water, which means you, you need to include it. Metal plus acid. Oh, metal plus acid. Salt and hydrogen. So aqueous can only be old water. No, it's dissolving in the new water as well. Ah, oh, Sophia's just figured it out. Good job. It means the old water. Oh, no, because, okay, let's say you did this dry. Yeah, let's say I had a hydrochloric acid gas and solid sodium hydroxide. It'll become salt and it'll look damp and wet and it'll dissolve because you will make water. It'll always be aqueous, but you still have to have the, the symbols there to balance the equation. Good question. Salt and hydrogen. Rule number two. Metal oxide metal oxide slash metal hydroxide, you put these guys together, oxide plus acid goes to salt and water. You guys have seen this before. Yeah, and then rule number three, metal carbonate. Metal carbonate plus acid goes to salt, water, and CO2. There we go. So rules in acid base theory. Yeah. You've got to know those rules. They're so important. So, and by the way, well done, Sophia, for figuring it out. It's my bad. I should have had another. It, it's totally my fault. Needed a third line. Yeah, because you're going to get magnesium sulfate. My laptop's hiccuping. Magnesium sulfate, CO2, and H2O. My laptop is very much hiccuping. There we go. And I think that probably adds up as well. It does amazingly. I feel like I want to give you guys a few more equations. But here's the next question then. So who's the acid and who's the base? Yeah, you guys can look at that. And every single one of you will be able to go, oh, this is, the, this is easy. Because in question number one, who's the acid? Who's the proton donor? See how long it takes you to do that. In fact, what's the, what's the what's the acid in each one of those? And now I'm going to give you a hard question. Question number four. I'm going to give you a difficult one.
Okay. HCL, thanks, Lara. Not complicated, was it? This is easy. You go, acid. Yeah, this is easy. Thanks so much, Lara. And you, you did that because you knew them. Agreed? Look at the next question, number four. Look at this guy. Question is, who's the acid? Who's the proton donor in number four? And can someone please tell me why this is weird? Why is this stupid? Should people should look at that and go, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. That's weird. They are both acids. Lara, not in this setting. Not in this setting. Where are ah, Sophia's on it? Guys, one, you're right. Lara's gone, there, but they're both acids. I've learned them as both acids. Well, if I put those acids together, somebody's going to be forced to not be an acid. And the equation tells you, the question is, who, who gained the proton? That's the question. Who gained it? And the answer is in the equation. Who gained it and who lost it? So what we realize is the proton, one of the protons from sulfuric acid has been transferred over to the nitric. So this one is, be, is acting as an acid and the nitric is being forced to act as a base. It's gained a proton. We can see from the equation, lost, lost a proton, brackets H plus. It's lost one. And look at this line. Shouldn't do that, it's too skinny. Yeah, look at this one. has gained a proton. My laptop's having real issues, folks, sorry. Oh, should be a, gained a proton, gain of H plus. Yeah, so it's just nice to be able to realize that chemistry is great and the rules are wonderful, but the problem is that the rules can be bent at times. Do you want another one? I'll give you another one, if you like. Let's do one more. I'm realizing the lesson's coming to an end shortly. My, my laptop is misbehaving somewhat here, folks. Going to get rid of, to try and close some of these things down. It's having a right fit. Uh, do you know what? Look at that. It's really freaking out. Going to give you one more. Going to give you one more. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, trying to think of a really good example. Okay, there's your equation. The question is, who's the acid? Who was the proton donor? See who does on the chat first. I'll bring the lesson to an end in a minute. Everyone's thinking about it. It's like, hmm, who's giving away the proton? My laptop is really, really struggling, folks. It's not enjoying whatever it is. 
Hey, Sophia and Lynn, well done. Good job. Spot on. There's the acid. The reason being is the NH4 has four hydrogens. It has lost a proton. It's giving that proton to the OH minus. Yeah. And so that's then forming water. It's quite clever being able to spot that movement of hydrogens is 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 a little bit tricky. Ammonium chloride can act as an acid. It can in certain circumstances. This is actually the chemical test for the uh, for the ammonium ion. If you want to test for the ammonium NH4+, you add sodium hydroxide and you warm it. You will make ammonia gas and when you warm it, it leaves and you can test with damp red litmus paper and it'll turn blue. It's cool that, showing you actually that it's an acid-base reaction or a neutralization, whichever you prefer. Now that brings us to the end of our lesson, folks. And we've ticked all of our learning objectives today, which is great. Be able to identify acids and bases from equations, even ones that you might not expect and, and might not recognize. I'm gonna, now, we are, whoop, there we go. Guys, I'm very aware that this is the last lesson for us for this week. Yeah, it's the last lesson for us this week, I think. Uh, yeah, my, why is all my electronic stuff going just completely crazy? There we go. It is our last lesson for the week. Next one's on Monday. I am going to post on the classroom some acid-base questions for you to start having a go at. And I will also include some titrations because titrations is going to be next lesson neutralization, the creation of salts. Right, guys, I will leave you be. Have a great rest of your day, guys. It's been awesome to see you guys. Take care, be safe, and I'll hopefully see you guys very soon. See you later, everyone. It's the saddest. Oh, don't say that. I want to be back. I know. Oh, you guys are more than welcome. It's always a pleasure. Oh, don't be sad, Zach. Yeah, I'll post some questions for you guys to have a go at. But I'll see you on Monday. Have a great rest of your day, folks. See you soon.